fail to plan, you have a plan for failure. That means if you don't address your checkbook accounting, if you don't address your tribal knowledge, you don't take the time to figure out how you're properly going to grow and actually implement it, you're going to fail. Today we're gonna to look at businesses and some of the numbers are quite fascinating. Apparently 7.7 .7 million businesses are expected to change hands over the next 10 years, comprising a total valuation of about $10 trillion. So the question becomes, how does that affect the average business owner? And that's where it gets a lot more interesting because apparently only 30% of the time do the businesses sell successfully. And yet most business owners have 80 to 90% of their total net worth tied up in that business. So there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle here that could either be satisfying to the business owner or dissatisfying to the business owner. And in fact, in fact disappointing to those business owners because the all the things that they set up are just not not going to fall into play. There's, it's going to be a lot of disappointment. So what we wanted to do is to bring in Patrick Garofalo to an attorney who does a lot of work with business owners. And one of the things that makes him, I submit, very notable is that not only has he successfully worked with business owners to successfully sell their businesses, and that would be a number 30, he himself has sold five businesses. Most people can't say that, so I would say that we have a very highly qualified person to join us today to talk about what's going on with business owners and how they can be better prepared as opposed to more disappointed. Patrick, please outline for us uh, exactly what you see in, in, in the problems that business owners, the pitfalls that they just happen to fall in. Well, it starts with the threshold question that all business owners have. Um, I'm ready to sell my business. I want to sell my business. And the question you ask, is your business ready to be sold? And that's when you get a blank stare from the owner. <laughs> and the blank stare lets you know that they have the same impediments that I've seen over and over in most small businesses, which are the majority of the American businesses. Checkbook accounting, tribal knowledge, no plan for profitable growth. Those are the three impediments. And let me talk about each one so we have an understanding of what it is. Please. Checkbook accounting. Have you ever heard that term, John? By you, yes, I have. Okay. Uh, checkbook accounting is really basic. You open your checkbook, is there money in the account? Yeah, I'm good. Example, I uh, recently was trying to acquire a manufacturing company. By every measure, um, it was insolvent. Um, the assets didn't equal its liabilities. Um, they had a cash flow shortage over six months of a half a million dollars. If they didn't get new capital, they're out of business. And we had a discussion with the building owner in January, and he said, this is the best financial position I've ever been in in January. And I asked him why. And he said, it's because I have more money in the bank today than I ever had in any other January. Uh-oh. He didn't know within three months he was out of money. That's checkbook accounting. That's pretty quick. That's really quick, and it happens all the time. People don't know how to forecast at all, and they don't, they, don't know, they don't know how to do it, they don't have the tools to do it, and it really comes from a fundamental failure to not understand accounting, not, not knowing how to use your accounting program to really monitor the business that you're operating. It's almost like taking your pulse. If your financial program can't tell you how your heart's beating on a daily basis, you're in trouble. That's checkbook accounting. So it's kind of like you mean I have, how could I possibly be overdrawn? I have plenty of checks? Is, is something like that? Sure. Okay, sure. we're looking at the wrong metric? All right. Correct. What's number two? Okay, tribal knowledge. And tribal knowledge is really what it means is, how do you make money? You know, How do you sell that widget? How do you sell that ad? What do you do to make money? And once you quantify how you make money, who knows how to do that? Well, it's typically the business owner, maybe a key employee. Well, the problem is, where is that knowledge? It's in their head. We call that tribal knowledge. The problem is when you want to transition, how do you take it from the head to the new owner? Most businesses, you have to stay on six months or more to help the transition. It's better if you do what I say, monetize it. Monetize Make, it. Monetize it by putting it into policies, procedures, job descriptions, so when somebody comes in they know what the CEO does. They know what the treasurer does. They know what the bookkeeper does. They know what the sales department does. Everything is set forth. So if I'm the owner and I die, somebody could come in and operate the business without a hitch. That's monetizing your tribal knowledge 
and that's really making your goodwill a valuable part of your business. And nobody does it because it's too big of a pain. So you reminded me of Ray Kroc, right? Who never flipped a hamburger, but McDonald's is a name we all recognize. And Correct. he built those systems and put into place the procedures so that a high school student could not mess up the French fries. And that way I can be in Ohio and have the same kind of quality French fries that I'm used to in California. All, all part of control. So you know what your business is doing, how it's getting done to ensure you have a quality consistent product and it ties into your financial controls. That's helpful. How about number and three? It, it ties into the third one. Okay. And the third one is a plan for profitable growth. Profitable means is growth going to be profitable to support the company as it grows and to return your investment. So you have to know how you're going to grow and is it going to be profitable, which means you need to understand there's a cost to growth. This uh, manufacturing company, not only did it have the first two problems, but it had no clear plan for profitable growth. The, the gentleman who owned it would say, okay, I'm gonna introduce this new product. Didn't cost it, didn't understand how much it cost him, he had no controls to monitor it, didn't know what the margins were, if any, really didn't know if he was making money on the product. And the old adage, I lose money on every sale, but I make up in volume, that doesn't work. Good luck with that. So what you need to do is rationalize, and we sat down and we had a selection of things that we wanted to introduce, for growth, but we priced out what it was going to cost. We priced out what we thought the market would pay for it based on comparable sales with other companies. We figured how to differentiate our product, and there are different product categories you want, but we planned out how we were going to grow this company from 4 million to 15 within three years with specific products that we knew how much it was going to cost. And that ties into your accounting program because we know how much it was going to cost, what the margins were, so we could monitor the sales almost on a daily basis. And if there's any deviation, we would know about it, we could correct it. So we maintain clear, profitable growth. One of the things I would like for you to address is debt. Make a little more, say a little bit more about that because it's one of those things, as you know, that can just eat a company alive. And, 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 and the interesting thing is, even when you can manage the debt, these are effectively promissory notes, right? Where you have to take current cash to pay future obligations, which means that this cash cannot be used for anything else except for making those payments. But as we all know, when you miss one or two or three payments, the house of cards comes to a crashing halt. And you know, this company also had that problem. Uh -oh. they, 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 uh, he kept getting new investors, mm. never paid back the old ones. So they never got a return of the capital because they never did their due diligence. And they believed the story he was selling. And then because he had really no assets, when he went out for money, the people who had loaned to him, it was either credit cards or it was a hard money lender, which meant his interest rates were 10 to 15%, which was killing the business. One of the things that we were doing was we were restructuring the company to get rid of all of this high interest debt. It could support some debt, but he was so desperate for money to plug all the holes in his operations, he would pay whatever he had to to get more money and say anything to anybody to get them to invest. And debt, debt will always kill you. Well, a predict and it's interesting that debt right now, the levels or the price for the debt is relatively low. And right. when we look at debt levels, as we look at numbers, consumers, businesses, and countries are at the highest levels of debt that we've ever seen in history. And these are at the lowest price debt you know, for the cost of that debt. Let's get back to double digit uh, debt levels and man, we're gonna see a lot of house of cards come crashing. Well, that's why asset costs are so inflated at current time. Indeed. With, with uh, low debt and you know, leverage, it encourages leverage, which is nice if you uh, have a plan for profitable growth and you can support it, but you gotta take that into account. And if you don't, you can get overextended very quickly. Well, we like our trademark, uh, the proof is in the planning. And if you would, real quickly, just kind of summarize the things that we want our business owners to focus on. Well, I, I guess the bottom line is really simple. If you fail to plan, you have a plan for failure. That means if you don't address your checkbook accounting, if you don't address your tribal knowledge, you don't take the time to figure out how you're properly going to grow and actually implement it, you're going to fail. And that's why 70% of the small business owners, which make up 90% of the businesses in America, are not gonna transition. And the owner and the family who thought that was gonna be a payoff for their retirement, or if it was gonna be a payoff for their family, they're gonna be disappointed because they waited too long to address it, and usually too long means too late. 
Too long means too late. So for business owners who are looking for an advantage, look no further than Investor's Advantage. We have the capability of great people along with uh, new technology for business owners to assess their business valuation without having to spend four to six months uh, getting that work done, spending ten to $20,000, which of course is very expensive. And that's one of the things that we'll be working with you on so the business owners can see, here's my plan for being successful, getting my price, not just being blind, thinking it's my time, it's on my, you know, my rules, and I'm going to get my price, and I have no way of evaluating any of that, as, except for I'm just making it up out of my head, right? That's where we're making it up. So uh, please feel free to check us out at our website, Why Be Poor. Uh, feel free to join us at our workshops, and we'll close with that. John Grace, President, Founder, Investors Advantage. Thank <laughs> you.